Hi again then guys and welcome to another specific bike review from after a very long hiatus, Ride 2. And for those who maybe are newer to the channel, we have featured bike reviews before, but they tend to be a little bit rarer on the channel than the car reviews, because that tends to be the majority of the audience. However, my passion is for bikes as well, for sure, and incidentally, this is only the second bike review that we've done from Ride 2 in particular, and the reason for that is very simple. Just like with my car reviews, I only like to review vehicles in a specific game in a series, if the newer games no longer feature that vehicle, because otherwise you end up reviewing the same thing multiple times for no real reason. And that is certainly the case here. Now this bike is very interesting compared to all of the other Ducatis in the game because it is of course the Diavel Carbon in particular, and like I said, it's totally different to everything else that Ducati has on offer, and it's kind of this interesting fusion of, I would argue, three distinct bike types into one. It's like a naked city bike to some degree, but it's got elements in there of cruiser or chopper, and also kind of a custom bike vibe to it as well. And overall, even though this is significantly newer, the vibe and especially the look with the very distinctive dark colours, the exposed carbon and the very distinctive exhaust system on this bike reminds me quite a lot actually of the Confederate F-131 Hellcat, which is also an extremely rare, I would say gorgeous looking bike, which is even more extreme than this one is, but also far less accessible and far more expensive. Now this bike is from 2014 at this point in the game, and and in the game, it's about the same as what it would cost you in real life. It's around a $20,000 bike, or at least it was when it was new, and in the game it's just under $24,000. So it's fairly close to real life there. As far as the engine goes, it does share its power plant with a number of other high-end Ducatis. It's an 1198cc system, and it puts out 163 .6 so let's just say 164 horsepower, which is very good for a bike that looks like this, aka more of a cruiser vibe than a sport bike, and it puts out a whole lot of torque, about 95 pound feet, which if I recall correctly is something like 130 newton meters, I believe. Now the weight difference between the carbon and the regular Diavel is around 5 kilos or so, so that's pretty healthy. Now 5 kilos doesn't sound like a huge amount, but of course that's far more significant in the bike world than it is for a car. 5 kilos in the bike world is more like 50 kilos or more for a car in terms of the weight difference. So in other words, kind of like what Porsche would do, going from the GT3 to the GT3 RS. You pay more, you get less. It's a similar kind of principle here. Now the bike is very visually striking, and of course that's the impetus of its design. Really it's designed to be eye-catching, but at the same time one of the reasons that I really like the way this bike performs and the concept behind it is that it asks the question of what if Ducati made something like a custom cruiser, but with the heart and with the performance, not just in a straight line but through corners too if possible, of a sport bike. And if any company could make that work, it would be Ducati, and I would argue they definitely have. Now one of my favourite things about this bike in terms of how it performs and how it feels is actually the rear wheel. And that may seem like a strange thing to hone in on, but the rear tyre in particular is very large. It's really chunky and it stands out a lot, and when you see it flying by in the replay, you can see how big it is in relation to the front. Now that's not unheard of, of course, there are plenty of bikes with really big rear tyres, even from the factory, but on this bike it looks even more exaggerated because the rest of the bike is so darkly coloured, it doesn't have the flashy body, so the attention naturally is drawn, I would say, to three things. The headlight, the exhaust, and the rear wheel. Those are the three dominating points of this bike's design. But, out of those three things, it's that rear tyre that has the most significance to the way it handles, because most cruisers or even naked bikes aren't necessarily the most manoeuvrable on a track. In city traffic, a city bike is fantastic. On the highway, a cruiser is great, but neither of them can necessarily keep up with a sport bike or a superbike around the track, because that's kind of the point of a sport bike or superbike, a full fared, you know, Kawasaki Ninja, Ducati 999, etc. That kind of machine. It, they're essentially trying to be MotoGP bikes for the street. And it, it shows. They're very good, they're very fast, but with this one, it almost feels like a MotoGP kind of style, 
in other words, a superbike, but with a cruiser body fitted onto it. And in the car world, there are some cars actually as well, which sort of mirror that vibe as well, where they look old fashioned, but underneath they're actually much newer. Something like a, the Eagle Speedster, for instance. And personally, even though I never took a huge amount of notice of this bike when it first came out, I actually love riding it in the game. It feels absolutely fantastic through corners, and one of my favourite things about it is how smooth it is. And that is partially due to that rear tyre, and also thanks to the torque. It's so effortless, and in real life that applies as well. Riding something like a Yamaha MT-07, for instance, which I did recently, you can just roll onto the torque very easily, and it takes no effort at all. It's not like you have to work the engine, and even though this engine has more than enough power, and it does rev up around 9,000, so it can roar if you want it to in that distinctive Ducati way, but it just feels like nothing is gonna phase the bike, and that's a nice feeling to have. And although that is a very specific riding style that certainly won't appeal to everyone, you know, some people prefer that frenetic, like I said, ninja style approach where it's screaming, really ringing every horsepower out of it around the track, for those of us who are like me, who for instance prefer a bigger, more comfortable kind of cruiser meets sport bike vibe, this pretty much does that perfectly actually, and it's something so different to every other Ducati in the game, and arguably most if not all other Ducatis in their range, and yet at the same time it feels at home there. But that's it for my thoughts on the Diavel Carbon, of course I'll see you guys next time, and for now, as always, thanks for watching.